Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Masaki Nakagawa. I'm an open source Swift engineer for NTT Data Corporation. Thank you for coming to our presentation. Okay, today we'd like to talk about know-how of challenging deploy operation LTT Docomo's mail cloud system powered by OpenStack Swift. Abstraction. Uh, Docomo mail is 24-7 cloud mail system which has access from over 20 million people. This mail system stores users' mail archive in OpenStack Swift with petabyte scale capacity deployed by NTT Data. We have been successfully operated this service since September 2020, uh, 2014 without any downtime. In this section, we will present the actual issue and challenges we have faced and conquered. Okay. This is contents and presented presentator. There are four things we'd like to cover today. Firstly, Mr. Kakehi will about uh, project overview. We we'll talk about project overview. Uh, he talks changes of Japanese mobile station and abstraction of this project. Secondly. Uh, I'll talk about process of migration Swift to ex existing Docomo mail system. Then, Mr. Kasai will talk about Swift technical challenges. He. Finally, I'll talk about large scale Swift operation. This presentation will talk about 40 minutes. We'll have a uh, QA session at the end of presentation. But if there are no time, please come NTT booth and let's discuss with us. Okay, let's start project overview section. Please, Kakehi. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sosuke Kakehi. I am delighted to have the opportunity to address you today. Today, I would like to talk about uh, briefly about this project. This project was very big challenge for our customer and us. There are three points to tell you about our project overview. I hope that our session will be to your help. And first of all, do you know NTT Docomo? NTT Docomo is a leading company in the Japanese mobile phone market. This company provides a very wide range and very stable mobile multimedia services. Our customer, Entity Docomo, provides a cloud mail system, a uh, cloud mail service since October 2013. This cloud mail service supports multi device access, and over 20 million people are using this system and provided by OpenStack Swift. This system has two types of storage. One is high performance and very expensive storage for later made data. And another one is high scalability and high availability object storage for archived made data. And yes, this is Swift. We must save the archived made data almost permanently in cloud made service. And later mail data must be earlier, per, earlier response speed because it affects the user experience. So we are changing the storage to be used in accordance with the data characteristics. This slide shows you this system scale. It has placed the storage node to three sites, and each site are more than 300 kilometers away from another one. 
this SIFT cluster has over 6.4 petabyte scale capacity, and it is composed by over hundreds of servers. So it is super large scale and super wide area storage system. Well, we do not tell you yet why we choose the OpenStack Swift. So I talk our project background. Previously, we were using feature phone. However, the market has changed significantly with advent of iPhone and Android. As now, smartphones are popular and many of the service supports the merge devices. How about mobile mail contest? What was changed? There is no major difference in the types of email contents, but the data size of each of the contents has been increased. We need more and more storage capacity for ma cloud mail services. So what is our best storage, device, storage choice? High-end storage has high performance, but unfortunately, it has extended limits, performance limits, and very expensive costs. We need to think about the other storage choices, which has flexible cap scalability, high reliability, and lower cost. We have started a study of this system from this background. Customer requirements was like this. High availability, disaster recovery, high scalability, and low cost, blah, blah, blah. So, absolutely, we need a software that implements the storage using OSS with IA server. And we found the OpenStack Swift. We have confirmed the feasibility of these requirements within the source code, Swift source code, and understand the Swift architecture, and testing, and testing, and testing. Finally, Swift has been adopted. This is a project overview, and let's move on to the next section. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kakehi. Uh, okay, let's start uh, migrate session. Uh, ATT Docomo has launched a Docomo mail service since October 2013, and Swift was installed Docomo mail system at January 2015. When did we migrate Swift to Docomo mail system? Docomo mail did not did not stop user service. In this session, I'd like to introduce overall Docomo mail system and the migration process. Sorry, there are many high confidential things. So this is a, some abstraction point. I'd like to start by looking at Docomo mail system overview. User mail is stored in backend storages. In front of, uh, sorry, if front end server is uh, received user requests, it will pick up user mail from backend storages. There are two types of backend storages. One is high speed block storages, which stores user mail. Sorry, block, which stores later user mail. Other is large scale Swift, which stores archived user mail. This Swift has six petabyte over capacity. This is user mail access flow. When user sends or receives new mail, it will be stored in block storage firstly. By using block storage, we achieve the mail will send and receive with low latency. After a while, some user mail will be archived and stored to Swift. If user accesses their mail, 
ドコメフロントエッジサーバーセレクトブロックストレージはスイフトアディクエイトリーアンドリターンメール This is system overview Next I'd like to talk about migration process Before Swift was installed, both archived and not archived mail was stored in block storage. When Swift was deploying, the core mail service had already started, and many users accessed, accessed the core mail service. This means that the core mail was already very important IT infrastructure in Japan. So, We need to deploy Swift and move archived user mail to Swift with no service downtime. To achieve this challenge, we divided the migrate process into four steps. First step, we deployed Swift and done system integration test, travel test, and parameter tuning. In this step, We are required to quick deploy and done many test cases. To achieve these tasks, we made use of Puppet automatic deploy and Tempest automatic test. The detail of these will be introduced by Mr. Kasai in technical session. Second step, after deploying and testing Swift, We started to copy archived mail to Swift from block storage. In this, in this step, we copied only test users' archive mail. General users' mail was not copied to Swift. This means that test users access Swift when they get their archive mail, but general user does not access. General user will access a block storage to get their mail. We operated this step for about five months and done long term stabilization tests. Third step after test users archive mail copy and long term test operation was done. We started to copy general users' archived mail to Swift for a talking feature against, the, against Swift trouble. Sorry, for taking measure against Swift trouble, we decided to keep at archived mail both block storage and Swift in this step. If Swift got fault, we could easily change differentiating storage. To block storage from Swift. Last step system durability test and launch services. Before starting service, we need to check whether this system can keep in service in high traffic season. So we did durability test in New Year's Day. Many of Japanese sent New Year's greeting mail. So, this makes very high traffic, so this is good timing to check the reliability test. And after New Year's Day, Swift, have, Swift has cleared this durability check, and we decided to remove archived user mail from block storage and Swift starts service. Uh, this is all of the migration step of uh, was finished. Conclusion of migrator session. Firstly, Docomo Mail has only block storages. We need to deploy and migrate Swift with no downtime. To, to achieve it, we divide migrate to four steps. First, deploy and test user mail copy to Swift. Next, general user mail copy to Swift with remaining block storage. Finally, system durability check. Uh, after this migration, uh, we achieved no service downtime, downtime, no downtime migration. As I said, in migrating, we achieved some technical challenges. Next, so next session, Mr. Kasai introduced this.
I'm Jose Kasai. Now let's start technical session. In this project, there are three big technical challenges which I show in this slide. Then I will explain about these challenges more in detail and also our solution of them. The first <coughs> sorry. The first challenge is the assurance of data durability of SWIFT. Uh, Japanese customers are often very sensitive about the quality of their system. Our system is a mission critical system, so we are extremely sensitive, sensitive about our system. Everything should be under control in our system. And we should design behavior of, behavior of the system not only in normal situation, but also in defeat situation. But in Swift, it's not so easy to design all of its behavior because Swift is a distributed system. And <coughs> many, compo many, components in, many components on many servers co-work to build whole function. But we have to analyze every, every behavior before building system. To solve this, this problem, we decided to, uh, to de recovery test. We made hundreds of test cases based on three aspects. The first is the point of failure, disk or NIC or process or not. The second is the number of failures. Uh, for example, one disk, one disk, two disks, uh, three, three disks. <coughs> the third is the range, range of failures. Um, for example, one node, one node, multiple nodes, and zones, regions. Uh, as a result of this recovery test, we ensure its extreme durability, availability, and reco recoverability. Swift can keep data and continues to work well, even if there are no there are no no sniper who no sniper who accurately break three hard disk drives storing same data from thousands of hard disks, or no big disaster which suffers which suffers all of data all of your data centers our second challenge is global distribute global distribution disaster recovery is required in this project and we decided to distribute distribute functions and data of Swift over, over multi data centers. Uh, each data center is more than 300 kilometers away from another one. And, and you can keep and access to data even if one of the sites, sites down because of unexpected disaster. <coughs> now, the placement is decided, but we have to check if Swift works, works well on such distributed construction. We have two points to evaluate global distribution. The first one is client request. When the client requested some, some process to Swift, uh, proxy server talks to storage servers and order process and transfer data. In global con construction latency between proxy and storage may, may affect this talk. The second one is durability. In Swift, 
Each storage nodes talk to one another to ensure all copies are stored. And in global distribu distributed cluster, they have to talk over network with latency. To test global, globally distributed Swift cluster, we constructed pseudo global cluster with simulated net network latency. We assumed, we assumed that, <coughs> uh, and we, change, we changed simulated latency from 10 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds and check, and check how behavior of Swift changes. With a pseudo global cluster, we tested two things. First, to ensure that Swift, Swift can serve for client requests properly, we tested object put, get, and delete. We checked its health, its health by error rate, and we checked uh, its performance by turnaround time for one request and throughput. Second, to ensure durability, we tested auto recovery feature uh, of object replicator, which recover which recover object uh, from the disk from disk failure. We check we checked its health by error rate and performance by turnaround time of one sync process and throughput. Here I. I show a result of our global cluster testing for client request. Uh, there are no, no, error code, no error caused by latency, and Swift works well on network with, lat with latency. <coughs> and response time uh, degrees as, as latency grows up, but but you can see uh, effective, effective throughput with concurrent requests. So, so we make applications send concurrent requests to Swift uh, to get effective throughput. Then I show, I show a result of object replicator testing. We can see uh, the result is very, very similar to to a result for client request. Uh, there are no there are no error, error caused by latency, and performance of one sync process degrades as uh, latency grows up. But you can realize effective throughput with with effective throughput with with concurrent process. The third challenge is quality. Now, we never get satisfied with saying, now everything seems to work well. We want to say, everything works well. In Swift, we, ha we have two aspects about quality, software quality and system quality. First, our solution for system quality is source code analysis. We read all source code, all source code and test all processes. And we customize it with, with making some official patches and some original patches. Next, our solution for system quality is automated testing. In Swift, we have two aspect, aspects about automated testing, APIs and nodes. We constructed automated testing tool, uh, tool based on Tempest. With this testing tool, 
we can test all responses from all, all Swift nodes, including not only normal response, but also error response. Something like uh, client error or server error. With testing tool, we can prove that uh, Swift works properly and and we ensure the quality of system building. <coughs> now we solved all, all challenges. Uh, to ensure data durability, we did, a, we did a recovery test in variety of failure pattern. And second, to realize a globally distributed cluster, we did uh, performance test of front end or back end with pseudo global Swift cluster. Third, to realize quality, we did source code analysis and automated testing. Okay, the ne next is operating session. Thank you, Mr. Kasai. And let's start operating session. Uh, overview of operating session. Operating scheme of document mail is, sorry, high confidential. So we would like to introduce about NTT data suite solutions operation. Document mail system uses NTT data suite solution with customizing. Okay, let's start. Uh, Swift is constructed by many nodes. Increasing Swift nodes, increasing operating work amount and operating hours. For example, system tuning, you need much operating work amount of changing parameters of many nodes. Adverse effects of large scale system is also to trouble frequency. Large scale system operator need to work much frequently. Frequently, if you scale out Swift, this problem will be more seriously. System operator want to reduce system operating cost as much as possible. But private Swift tend to be against this needs. To solve this problem. MTT data has know-how of reducing Swift operating cost. Uh, from the next page, I'd like to introduce some of know-how overview. First point to reduce operating work amount. We use some famous operating tools. These pictures in slides are example. To rebuild failed nodes, or to build scale out nodes easily. We use Pixie Boot and Kickstart. To access many nodes in parallel uses PSSH and PSCP. To same tuning easy without fail, use, we use SVM for configuration management and Puppet configuration deploy. These tools are very famous and used in many projects and we can really own. I think you know these tools. <coughs> Next, I'd like to introduce about how to reduce work frequency. <coughs> Sorry. The tools which I have introduced, like PSSH, PSCP, uh, can reduce work amount, workload, but cannot reduce work frequency. You can reduce it by using redundant, te redundant te te technology by RAID, like RAID. But it comes device costly. As a countermeasures against this, we have formulated pending scheme for low emergency port. 
we have considered work around for any system faults and decided priority of these. If system fault, which is defined as low cost priority, low priority is occurred, operator can pen recovery work. This let operator reduce work frequency. For example, low priority system faults are recovered in periodic maintenance operation. But it is not enough to reduce operating amount. This is because operator need to check and decide which bend or not while system alert is occurred. When, sorry. To more reduce operator's load, we have changed check scheme or some low priority monitoring items. Checking by periodic performance check. Operator checks service health by using process performance information. We can check running time of background process by using uh, Swift Recon information. For example, uh, in this case, auditor process, uh, operator can check audit process times by Recon. If process time is unusual, operator can judge this process condition is green. By this scheme, we have been able to reduce operator workload. Of course, we can customize which monitoring item set to this scheme. Conclusion of operating session. Swift is constituted by many nodes. System operating costs of Swift tend to be costly. Uh, NTT data has no how to reduce switched operating operation cost uh, using operation parallelized tool, customizing for monitoring priority, change monitoring items to periodic checks. Doco mail service uses NTT data switch solution with customizing. NTT Docomo achieves reducing 60% to 70% TCO total cost of ownership for five years. Okay, a conclusion of this presentation. We introduce usage, challenge, and operating OpenStack Swift at Tukum Mail service system. System migration with no service downtime. Uh, three technical achievement. Reduce operating cost. And Tukum Mail has been serviced with no downtime. Okay, uh, it's end. So do you have any question or comment? <laughs> Sorry, our English skill is very, <laughs> very bad, so please speak so slowly. Okay. Um, my name is Pete Zaitsev and uh, I work for Red Hat okay. where I work on Swift as a, a core reviewer. So I have uh, three questions if I may. Okay. Da job? Hi. Uh. <laughs> uh, so in uh, Kaisai San's uh, example, there was on the one uh, proxy server, but the geographic distributions of object servers was in, in place. Uh, do you actually distribute proxy servers or was it just a test example? Once again? Uh, Hi. Correct. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. So in this, uh, we only have one proxy. So if that proxy goes down, what happens? Yeah. Thank you for thank you for your question. Um, uh, our uh, our test our test situation is is that that uh, that system. But 
But actually, uh, we have we have another another proxy site uh, in in site site three or site four. So so one one site uh, one of the proxy site downs. Uh, uh, the proxy proxy site changes uh, another site. So oh, okay, okay. Uh, understood. So you have a load balancer that does the switching between proxies, right? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So if I may, second question. Um, could you provide actual cluster numbers, at least approximately, how big the cluster is? Uh, I know many companies consider it a, a secret, uh, but uh, <laughs> at least Rackspace released some numbers that were uh, approximate, so that we know the... Uh, it, uh, I'm sorry. It, it's it's high confidential. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, probably not. Uh, so, uh, and final question: Did you? Uh, I I noticed like the biggest downside you mentioned was the high cost of uh, operators or in in a human uh, operation of the cluster. Did you? consider asking the community for any specific uh, improvements that would help you? Uh, if yes, uh, how did that go? And Please don't threat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the English. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, we have uh, many trouble. Uh, there are many uh, to challenge, but uh, no. well, m maybe I can explain a little bit. Uh, there was a list of patches, and I recognized some of those patches. I reviewed them, but uh, but uh, those patches were relatively small in the, in scope. Small scope. Yeah, like um, adding process names, checking, and stuff like that. But uh, if you have any ideas uh, about additional, like more. Uh, a bigger change to Swift, then it's also welcome. Uh, I was kind of wondering if you already have any ideas for um, that would have a bigger impact on reducing human cost for Swift, uh, operator cost. Uh, in my understanding, your uh, understanding, your question is uh, which I have idea uh, to reduce operating cost. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, actually, um, this uh, this our scheme, we, uh, we can uh, reduce the operating cost gra grammatically. So, two more reduce operating cost. Uh, uh, it's a trade-off to reduce uh, monitoring items and. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, monitoring, monitoring items, number of monitoring items, and uh, operating cost. It's trade off, I think. And to deduce, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, please okay, come. So uh, I, I can talk. Uh, I could talk it separately. I thought maybe you already had some uh, some wish list uh, items that we could share. Uh, okay. Well, thank you very much. Sorry.
Hi, my name is Mariano Cugnetti. I'm in the CTO at EntraCloudSuite.com. It's an Italian cloud service provider. I was very interested to understand if you can share. Am I going too, too fast? <laughs> uh, okay. I would like to understand what kind of software do you use to move emails from later emails to archived emails? Do you use Dobcot as an email server, and do you use any proprietary plugin, or did you write them yourselves? Thank you for question, and uh, sorry, uh, it's a bit one of confidential point uh, to <laughs> to <laughs> archive mail to Swift. Okay, so you cannot share anything about this. Okay. You cannot share any yes, of yes, the information. Share. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. And um, I'm wondering if you work with any service providers or consulting firms to help you um, guide through uh, the deployment process of OpenStack. As a customer? As, uh, I mean, did you work with any consulting firms to help you deploy the OpenStack, or uh, Docomo figure this out by itself? Without Docomo. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for the question. And, uh, we so we typed up, and we have already uh, some companies to con we have already consulted to deploy OpenStack uh, some company like uh, Kirin, and uh, Kirin is a very big famous uh, company, and uh, we have a Kirin session in uh, Thursday. Oh, so NTT Data is the consulting firm? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Data Prospect, so to NTT Telecom. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. I, yeah, sorry. sorry <laughs> Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's time to up, so thank you for coming. And uh, next time we'd like to uh, improve my English skills. <laughs>